Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and have the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 5th of February. Coalition government gains trust vote, political chaos ends in India's Charkhand. Maldives to send Indian troops back before March 10, says President Muizu. And at least 10 killed in attack on police station in Pakistan ahead of polls. And now for all the details. Giving a breather to the India Alliance, the opposition bloc successfully cleared the flow test in Jharkhand Legislative Assembly on Monday with a majority of 47 votes in its favour. Setting off the debate on the trust vote in the 81-member Assembly, Jharkhand's Chief Minister Champai Sorin accused the BJP-led union government of misusing the central agencies and said an attempt is being made to suppress the leadership of rivals. Whole country is seeing how injustice is being done to Hemant Sorin, he added. Former Jharkhand CM Hemant Sorin, who was arrested by the ED, was also present in during the floor test after a special court allowed him to take part. Hemant Sorin lashed out at BJP and said he cannot understand why the central government has hatred towards the Dalit and tribal community members. He alleged governor of the state also played a role in facilitating his attention. कुल मिलाकर झारखंड के परिपेक्ष के अलावा पूरे देश के पैमाने में अब आदिवासी दलित पिछड़ाल संख्या सुरक्षित नहीं विशेषकर झारखंड में तो यहां के खनिज संपदाओं को जो वर्षों से इस पर लोगों की गिद नजर है और आगे भी रहेगी ये तो हम थे अध्यक्ष महोदय ये बहुत फुक फुक करके उनको आगे बढ़ना पड़ता था ये खुला दरवाजे की आदि हो चुके हैं इनको कोई रोक टोक नहीं कर सकता जो इनके सामने आएगा वो इसी तरीके के अंजाम से उसको गुजरना पड़ेगा While gaining the trust vote has provided a relief for the opposition bloc the arrest of Hemant Sorin a key regional ally is a major challenge to the India alliance both in terms of larger perception and electoral preparedness and as tensions between India and Maldives escalate, President Mohammed Muizu on Monday said that both the countries have agreed to send back the first group of Indian troops deployed in the island nation before March 10. Muizu, regarded as a pro-China leader, said he believes a larger majority of Maldivians support his administration with the expectation that they will remove foreign military presence from the country and recover the lost oceanic territory. Muizu said that the biggest presidential promise is to protect the freedom and sovereignty of the people of Maldives. Notably, the removal of Indian troops in the Maldives was the main campaign of Muizu's party. Currently, there are around 70 Indian troops, along with Dornier 228 maritime patrol aircraft and two helicopters stationed in the Maldives. In news from Pakistan, at least 10 police personnel were killed and six others were injured in a terrorist attack on a police station in Pakistan's Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province on Monday. The attack comes at a time when the country is heading towards general elections this week. It was not clear yet who was behind the attack. <laughs> The border regions of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa for years have seen Pakistan Taliban, Islamic State and other groups attacking government and security targets as well as targeting civilians. Pakistan has seen a resurgence of attacks by Islamist militants, especially those targeting security personnel since 2022, when a ceasefire between the Pakistani Taliban and the government broke down. Meanwhile, massive counter-protest against inflation, wheat crisis and unfair taxes erupted in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir on Monday, 
as Pakistan observed its so-called Kashmir Solidarity Day. Take a look. Locals and political activists in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir on Monday held shutdown strikes and came onto streets to call out Pakistan for observing its so-called Kashmir Solidarity Day. The protesters lambasted Islamabad for its double standards and accused instead the people in its occupied part of Kashmir are reeling from soaring inflation, wheat crisis and load shedding. Even after 70 years, they do not have access to electricity and water, while Islamabad continues to exploit their natural resources. Activists blame while Pakistan falsely claims to have granted autonomy to Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, elected officials have no say in the policy making and people are denied even basic fundamental rights. Sri Lanka is effectively navigating towards economy stability despite numerous impediments and challenges, President Ranil Vikramasinghe said in a statement marking the Independence Day of the country on Sunday. Recalling that the past year celebration was marked by the indignity of being labelled as a bankrupt country, Vikramasinghe said midst of many difficulties, the island nation was able to move forward little by little with citizens supporting the long-term program of rebuilding the country by enduring hardships. The correctness of the current course has now been confirmed in front of the whole world, he said, adding that the economy will be strong. Economic mismanagement coupled with the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic left Sri Lanka severely short of funds for essential imports, tipping the country into its worst financial crisis. The island nation is gradually recovering after the crisis through aid from bilateral creditors and IMF bailout program. And human rights activists in Nepal on Monday submitted a letter to the Russian embassy addressing President Vladimir Putin demanding the end to the war in Ukraine and repatriation of Nepali citizens recruited in the Russian army. Organized by the Human Rights and Peace Society Nepal, Dozens of activists demonstrated outside the Russian embassy in Kathmandu. Last week, Nepal's foreign minister said more than 200 Nepali nationals have been recruited by the Russian army and at least 14 of them have been killed in the Russia-Ukraine war. Nepali soldiers have been serving the British and Indian armies following an agreement between the three countries. There is no such agreement with Russia or any other countries. <laughs> उद्धार को लागि चाहिँ यो प्रेसर क्रिएट को लागि चाहिँ हामी चाहिँ यहाँ जम्मा भएको छौ र हामीले उहाँलाई दिएको पत्रमा पनि एक त शान्ति समाज सधैं युद्धको चाहिँ नि युद्ध निषेध गरिनु पर्छ भन्ने एउटा अवधारणाबाट चाहिँ सुरु भएको विगत 28 वर्ष देखि यसको अभियान चाहिँ युद्ध निषेध शान्ति विशेष अभियानमै यो केन्द्रित छ र यो 712 दिन पनि क्रस भयो आजबाट यो युक्रेन र चाहिँ नि रसाको युद्ध भएको त्यसलाई स्टप गरेर मानवीय चाहिँ नि मानवता बचाउ यसले चाहिँ कसैको पनि यसलाई यसले चाहिँ प्रमोट गर्दैन यसले मानवीय क्षति गर्ने हो संसार भरि तपाई संसार एन्ड पार्ट्स अफ इन्डियाज जम्मू एन्ड कश्मीर आर कभर्ड इन अ थिक शीट अफ स्नो टर्निंग द रिजन इन्टु अ पिक्चर एक्स पैराडाइज मेकिंग टूरिस्ट एन्ड लोकल्स ओभरजॉयड लोकल बिजनेस ओनर्स आर एस्थेटिक दैट दिस इज द चान्स फॉर देयर बिजनेसेस टु फ्लरिश आफ्टर अ स्लो सीजन इन जनवरी Earlier this month, a lack of snowfall had led to empty ski resorts and holiday cancellations with scientists linking the unusual winter to the El Nino weather phenomenon. The weather department has forecast better precipitation over the western Himalayas region and adjoining plains until next week. Locals in Srinagar city were seen sweeping the snow-covered roads using shovels and broomsticks. Snowplows were also used to keep snow from piling up and leading to traffic disruptions. First of all, it was a good thing. 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 That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.